I'm back again talking about why I prefer harnesses over collars and today we're going to talk about yet another critical structure that's there in the neck, blood vessels, arteries and veins. Arteries are the ones that carry pure or oxygenated blood from the heart up to the brain and the eyes and veins are the ones that carry deoxygenated blood or impure blood uh, back down into the lungs for purification. Something interesting about these two is that arteries are often buried quite deep in the body, not very easily accessible, while the ones that we see on the surface, the blood vessels you see on the surface, are typically veins. So the blue lines that you see on your wrist, on your eyelids, legs, sometimes forehead, they are all veins. Arteries are there at the surface of the body only in a few places, and those are the places where you can actually feel the pulse. So you would have probably seen doctors feeling pulse on the wrist, that's one place. And another place is, you guessed it right, the neck. Go ahead, feel it and see if you can feel your artery. You can actually feel the lubbed up, lubbed up of the heart in the arteries. That's an artery. Veins don't pulsate like that. They have more from oozing flow of blood. Why is this important to know? Blood vessels are also extremely delicate structures and if they're so close to the surface, that means that it's very easy to put pressure on them directly or indirectly and that restricts the flow of blood. Restricting the flow of blood in arteries means reduced supply of nutrients and oxygen. While several parts of the body may be somewhat tolerant to um, temporary reduction in flow of blood to the, uh, the blood supply or the uh, oxygen supply, the brain is extraordinarily sensitive to it and very quickly the brain cells start dying. And what if the venous blood or the impure blood is restricted and it's not able to flow back? It starts building pressure. Um, you might actually have seen the some dogs that pull a lot. You can actually see their tongue turning blue and that's basically the venous blood that's not returning. And this is a lot, and it can lead to a lot of complications, but an interesting one is it can lead to glaucoma. Now that's a long-term impact. And these kind of long-term impact are things that we rarely tie back to the original cause, right? Um, and this is true of any long-term um, uh, incorrect equipment or uh, incorrect chairs, posture, the wrong shoes, the wrong mattress. In the long run, they lead to complications, but we rarely are able to tie it back. Well, in our case, because we can feel the cause and effect, it's a little easier, but it's so much harder in a dog. And that's what makes this so sensitive for me. Now, there are people who will argue that the dog's neck is somewhat different and therefore these considerations are not really valid. All mammal necks are somewhat similar in the structures that are there. All mammals do have arteries and veins that are actually going in and going up to the brain and they can actually get damaged quite easily or you can restrict the flow in there. So I will discuss that bit a little bit later in one of the later videos. But for now, my aim is to get you to uh, develop a better understanding of the anatomy of the dog, specifically the anatomy of the neck. So, if you have any more questions about anatomy, arteries, veins, or any of the other critical structures you have spoken about, send them to me. If you have any questions about harness system, send them to me. And as always, I'll try my best to uh, create some educational content around.